Hey everyone, Ben from Postfly here. This month's saltwater tie is a shrimp pattern called the peel and eat. Crustaceans are an important forage for everything from permit to striped bass, and the peel and eat is a great versatile imitation of this food source. If you're new to saltwater fly tying, this specific pattern is also a great way to get comfortable with materials and techniques you'll see time and time again. To start, tie in your tan thread and create a base a few eye lengths down the hook shank. We'll lay the rest of our thread base later, but for now we're just going to start with tying in our eyes. Tie them in with a few quick wraps, and then take wraps opposite of the ones you just did to get them straight and into position. Dumbbell eyes are notorious for slipping off the hook shank, so there are a few methods used to really lock them into place. My favorite techniques consist of two different wraps above and below the eyes. We'll start from the top. Take wraps over each end of the eyes and under the hook shank, and repeat generously. Here's an above view of how I do this as well. Again, we're wrapping over the eyes and securing them to the hook by going under the shank, in front of, and behind the eyes. And again, I'm just going to do this a bunch more times to really lock it on there. There's no set amount of wraps you really want to make here, but I usually go until I see a bit of a thread dam building up where I'm laying the thread down. For the second step, we'll wrap under the eyes and over the hook shank. This will complement the wraps we just did above the eye, and if done correctly, you'll actually start to see those above wraps being drawn in and getting tighter where the eyes meet the shank. Here's another top-down view of this motion. Again, this time we're going under the eyes and over the hook shank. As in before, I'm gonna do a generous amount of these wraps. Once I feel like I'm getting close, I'll give the eyes a little bit of a wiggle to see if they're locked in, and if so, then we're all set. Finally, to give these eyes a little bit more durability, I'm just going to take a couple drops of quick drying head cement above and below those wraps. Next, I'm going to finish my thread base just to about where the hook point comes out over the shank. This is where we're going to tie in what will make up the head and front legs of our shrimp pattern. Next, grab your arctic fox tail and cut off a generous clump down to the base. We're going to tie that in right where we finished our thread base. You can secure it in with just a few loose wraps and then tighten it down once it's in place. You'll see me do a few wraps up the hook shank to secure more of that tag end in place. This will just give those tail fibers a bit of a stronger hold and just cut off the rest of the tag. Now it's time to add in our shrimp eyes. These can be a little tricky to work with, but the best way I've found to tie them in and to get the eyes to splay out is to cut them where the eyes are joined together and tie each stock in separately. With the eye curved out, wrap it in on top of the fox hair and work a little up towards the dumbbell eyes. Then mirror this with the second eye. You may need to make some loose wraps at first so you can play around with the eyes to get them into position. Then you can tighten them down afterwards. With both eyes secured, wrap the stalks back toward the hook eye. The rounded plastic slips easily, so be sure to tie these in well. Once they're locked in, cut the plastic tags. Here you'll see me just covering up where the plastic is cut and laying a thicker thread base on top of the eye stalks. This is to both further secure the eyes and prevent future materials from slipping. Now grab your pearl flash and pull off two strands. We'll tie these strands in at their midpoint. Once secured, fold the front facing strands back and wrap them in as well. Again, here you'll see me gathering all ends of those two strands and folding them back over the end of the hook. You'll probably have to cut these since they'll be a little long, and I like to cut each strand separately to make it look a little bit more natural. Now grab your craft fur and cut off a generous chunk. You want this clump to be fairly even, so pull out any super short or long strands. This will be tied in a little above the shank from where the flash, eyes, and fox hair were added, and about double the length of the hook shank. I like the fur to spread out a little bit on top of the shank while ensuring it still stays just on top. Attach the fur with a few loose wraps and manipulate the fibers to create this look before you actually lock it in. Once complete, gather up all the tag end strands in your hand and just cut them off. Wrap down any remaining butt tag ends from the materials down at the bend. Then bring your thread to around the base of where we just tied in those last few materials. Next, grab your silicone legs. Snap them off at each end of their bases. Your first set of legs will be tied in just above the head of the shrimp. Fold your legs around the thread and bring the thread above the shank like you're going to make a wrap. 
slide the legs down into position and then finish your wrap, ensuring both ends of the legs stay on top of the hook shank. You can make a few more wraps towards the bend of the hook to ensure that the legs stay folded back. When they're where you want them, cut them to about the same length as the craft fur. Now grab a clump of dubbing and work it around the thread. We're going to go over the wraps we just made to secure the legs, and then start working a few centimeters up the hook shank. This will complete the first step of a series of legs we'll add, all in the same manner as before. Make sure that your dubbing body is even with no noticeable bumps. The back end of our fly is fairly bulky from all the materials that we've added, so you'll find you won't need to add much dubbing here compared to when you start wrapping forwards. At about the hook shank's halfway point, added another leg in the same way we did earlier, folding it around the thread and sliding it down over the hook. Trim the legs back to about half an inch from the ends of the furthest back legs, then cover with dubbing and continue forwards. We'll add one more set of legs in here at the same distance apart as the last two additions. Secure and trip these legs to the same dimensions as before, and continue advancing with your dubbing. When you've reached about a dumbbell eye's width of space behind the dumbbell eye's, stop adding dubbing. Advance your thread to directly behind the eyes and prepare to add your rabbit strips. The rabbit strips will add some much needed bulk to our fly, with the leathery section also serving as additional legs or claws. Cut a triangular gap in the strip itself, ensuring that you're cutting against the direction the fur is brushed. Part the fur at the desired length of your strip and cut again, pulling the loose pieces before you tie it in. Your end result should be two pieces of strip cut in the same pattern a couple of centimeters in length. Be sure to give yourself some extra room on the leather to attach it to the hook shank. Now invert your hook. Tie in the strips one at a time with the leather strips facing out, positioned just behind the eyes and aimed slightly at the hook point. We'll cover these wraps with dubbing in the end, but be sure to tie in the strips with bare thread. It will cut nicely into the leather, pinning it to your hook. When adding the second strip, make sure it's positioned at roughly the same angle and in the same area as the first. We can make slight adjustments here before we lock it in with more wraps. Continue covering any outstanding tag ends of the strips. When you're satisfied, flip the hook back over and twist more dubbing into your thread. Cover the rabbit strip wraps up to the dumbbell eyes. When finished, move your thread in front of the dumbbell eyes and lay a base for your whip finish if there is still any bare hook. Grab your whip finish tool and give four or five turns to the eye of the hook. Cut your thread and add a few drops of quick drying head cement. The peel and eat will ride with the dumbbell eyes down and the hook point up. This will allow the craft fur and legs to kick nicely when stripped off the bottom and let the fox and rabbit wiggle naturally in movement or when stationary. Hope you put it to you soon and best of luck on whatever shrimp eaters you use this on. Thanks for watching.